Okay, so what exactly does happen when you go up against quantum suicide? For those who want a very sort of detailed explanation of what is going on. Because I, I do realize that there's a lot of lack of rigor in uh, people's speech when discussing this, as if things were sort of in the abstract. But I want to be as sort of really focused as possible. So here you have someone who is function, someone who is a brain that is creating experiences. You are having experiences, and here you are. And it's that very previous moment before you go into that box. Then you go into that box. Now, 50% of you dies, and 50% of you doesn't die. In the entire uh, wave function. So let's be clear, there, there's a whole bunch of people that are very, very similar to you anyway, all, or all across the universe. There are people in different Hubble volumes that look very similar to you. There are people in different quantum branches that are already very similar to you. But we are focusing on some particular little um, seeming stream of this thing. And then we put you in this box, 50% of you is, what happens to it? What does it mean to exit out, to put an X there? What does it actually really physically mean? It means that the qubit was found in such a state that it set off a bomb. And that bomb inside there incinerates that body but that takes uh, time, believe it or not. Even this actually takes time. So here you are, you're some person, and just to illustrate, you know, it's right here, and it blows up, and it's destroying your person, it's destroying your person, it's destroying your person. Here's your brain, and it begins to destroy it at some point, all that algorithmic complex complexity, and I'm going to, I like to use circles, circles that build on top of each other like this, like some sort of pyramid. It's, it's the thing that I like to use. That's all the algorithmic complexity going into creating this self-model, this, this state of being conscious, having a capacity for memory or binding. I'm defining these as equivalent, the seeming binding uh, of consciousness as also the capacity for self-reflective memory in the present. These are synonymous. And th those depend on a certain level of algorithms building on top of algorithms. As I explained in my other videos, those algorithms are already distributed in space-time. So they're, they're already part of an eternal fabric. Every little piece has, uh, can only be defined relative to the others through relative reference frames. So there, there is no single time to which they belong. Let's make that very, very clear. So then what is it that actually happens? Well, you very, very quickly lose all that specificity. You lose all that specificity all the way to the most simple possible experience for a tiny amount of a fraction of a second. And then the body itself, it, it, this is just completely destroyed. There's nothing there, there's no consciousness there, there's just ashes. Yet, you were those experiences all along. So the only thing you could possibly because remember, the body doesn't carry like some essence. Uh, consciousness is not some epiphenomenal, you know, ghostly smoke or some cologne attached to the body. Uh, what it is, it's embodied in the computations in the first place. That's what consciousness is and always was. <laughs> and again, these are timeless computations. As I explained in all my other videos, go watch that. If you think that doesn't make sense, go watch those other videos. Okay, and so 
the thing that happens here is now you're the simplest possible experience for that tiny amount of, of a moment. So therefore you are identical, computationally speaking, to a whole bunch of other computations across the universe that are indistinguishable from you. They are indistinguishable over here, over here. They have nothing to do with this crazy suicidal experiment that you underwent in which 50% of you uh, had this occur to them. They are just, whatever, you know, they got there through some other means. It doesn't matter through what means they got. They are now identical to you. They are not actually separate. You are that because you are that unit which only has one. It has nothing built on top of it. But it can be used by these other computations. So stuff can be built on top of it. And this is what Eliezer Yudkowsky calls um, only being able to be rescued as a group. So once you reach a certain level of destruction in, in specificity, you can only be rescued out as a group because you became so identical to a whole bunch of computations, which are you, which are the same one, which are the same shape. And then whatever happens from there, it's probably going to have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with your memories that do survive here. Here, you know, 50% of you went here, and 50% of you went here, here, you know, just you died in the sense of entropy, in the sense that you die every single moment. It's just entropy, but it's it's just a little bit of death, so that you pretty much still remember this guy pretty well. You remember this guy pretty well, and then whatever, right? You you don't consider yourself dead. Whereas over here, when, when this happens, when you blow up, who the hell knows what happens to experience? what it gets recruited by, what it gets harvested by, um, computationally speaking. But, um, but yeah, so, th so that's the extent of quantum immortality. Quantum immortality doesn't actually mean that you start seeing things deviate from the Born rule. It just means that 50% um, of you goes there and 50% of you goes here, just like it always did. But people confuse two different issues. They confuse the issue of um, quantum suicide with the issue of what experience was in the first place. So a lot of people are assuming that it was epiphenomenal, and it just isn't. It's embodied in timeless computation. 